All right then, Steve, as the Roosters make their way out onto Richardson Park, these two teams last year drew 18 all in their one match at the Sydney Football Stadium. As we have a look at that Roosters squad for tonight, Junie, Mackay, Hudson and Richardson, the centres, Werrett, the halves, Walker and Lamb, their forward pack, Lowry, O'Donnell, David O'Donnell, the captain, Brad Pike, Tony Iro, Mark Prothero coming in for Craig Salvatore and Nigel Gaffey. And of course, also these two teams with new coaches. For season 1995, Phil Gould in charge of the Roosters. And Tom Radonik is back home with the Western Suburbs Magpies. And they are the Magpies on screen right now. Paul Langmack leads them out onto the ground. It's been a couple of seasons since Winfield Cup football has been played at Richardson Park. And since that last match, there's been major work going on. They've spent a lot of dollars as we look at the Western Suburbs side. Leeds, Smith, McGuinness, Pearson, Bell, Harves, Willis and Georgialis. And their forward pack, Glenn Grief, Cherry Mesher, Brent Stewart, Bill Dunn, Jim Sedaris and Paul Langmack. In fact, as you can see there, the crowd in the background, that stand is where all the dollars have been pumped into. But I must admit, the crowd is a little disappointing and disappointing for the Northern Territory Rugby League. Steve Rogers up here, one of the head men. And Stephen Clark is the man who has charge for this Winfield Cup fixture. Andrew Walker will have play underway. The Roosters running from left to right on your screen. And we are a long way from the home bases of these two clubs. As Stephen Clark gets play underway, Walker driving the ball deep from the kickoff. And Block has already mentioned the wettest wet season on record, or for certainly many years, and this ground is heavy underfoot. The grass grows about three inches in 24 hours. As the Magpies, it's Langmack tackled just short of the 20. Western Suburbs, as Gary mentioned earlier, very impressive last week in disposing of Parramatta. Yes, they're going to have a job on their hands. The Magpies found some form. East are going to have a, a Roosters are going to have certainly a lot of work to do here. Let's remember they're without Terry Hermanson and Craig Salvatore. Their forward pack has been going well. They need to fight tonight. Sadara skirted wide and found Pearson coming onto the ball and a half gap for the Magpies on tackle five just inside Roosters territory. As we come backfield, now with Leeds the high ball. Pressure early for Darren Juni. Impressive last week under the high ball. His first chance tonight. And he's done well again, Darren Juni. And there was plenty of pressure. There was. That was a great take by Juni. Plenty of pressure there. Andrew Willis was the best chaser there for Wests. But uh, Juni, well, never took his eyes off the ball. You see him here. They're straight over the top of him. Paul Bell almost took his head off. But he hung on to it. That'll do a lot for the confidence of Darren Juni, the former Wallaby, as this is Prothero working it back up to within 15 metres of halfway. Prothero called into the squad on Thursday evening to replace Craig Salvatore, who was due to make his comeback from a knee injury. Five tackles up again now for the Roosters, so we haven't seen a handling error as yet. A player I thought was taken late by Bill Dunn. We might hear some action on this one as McGuinness fields the ball. It came off the side of the boot and McGuinness wrapped up by Rickinson. Rickinson. Well, it turned out to be a very good chase by Dunn. It was a poor kick. Poor kick from the back from Juni and uh, West automatically straight back on the attack. Locker on the sideline. Yeah, just talking to uh, Gus Gould before the game. He had a big rap for Darren Juni. The thing that he likes most about him is his courage. He's got no fear when the high balls are up. This is Brent Stewart playing the ball. 35 metres out from the line. Again, Langmack. Nice short ball to Sedaris. And Sedaris has been taken high in the tackle by Lowry. This will be a penalty to the Magpies, and it remains to be seen on what action, further action, Clark will take. Well, it didn't look too vicious first off. Getting a David receiver. O'Donnell will go to the blood bin. Here's the tackle again. Well, he's grabbed him just across the top of the shoulder in the first instance. I don't think there was too much in that at all. It's not a swinging arm, is it? No, he's just grabbed him across the shoulder. The ball, the hand, arm slips straight back down below the ball. David O'Donnell, the captain for the night. An early exit, or just for a short while anyway, to the blood bin. And on in jumper number 29 is Brendan Hall. Very much a seasoned campaigner for the Sydney City Roosters. Yeah, that. What that penalty has done is enable the Magpies to look for their first points of the night. And there you can see what Andrew Leeds has in front of him. Around 26 metres out from goal, just off centre. And he has been in great kicking form so far this season. 13 from 16 in the opening four rounds of the Winfield Cup. And 27 points in total. And his general play, as always, has been good. So Leeds is doing his job at the back for the Magpies.
They're looking for goal 14 of the year to get the Magpies on the board. It's a crook old kick to start the night. So we remain with the scoreline of the Roosters and the Magpies nil all. You put the mockers on him instantly. Andrew, give him a rap about how well he's kicking and that was probably the, one of the more ordinary kicks we'll see from Andrew Leeds in a season. The mock on a few horses today at the Fenny Bay Racecourse as well. It's carried on into the evening as George Arliss is the man who takes it inside the Roosters half. Now it's Bill Dunn with charge from the second row. Tackled front on by Hall. The Magpies are 40 metres out from the Roosters line. Sadara slips into dummy half. Now the ball with Brent Stewart, the Kiwi prop. And tackled by it, another former Kiwi, and Tony Iro. Cherry Mesh were a little slow getting that pass away. Georgialis then fed the ball on to Willis. Nice ball inside for Georgialis. It was good hands. Then back to Grief inside the 20. The Magpies putting their passes together. Five tackles, 15 metres out from the Roosters line. Chance on the left side of the park. Langmat. He sends the ball back in field. It was touched in flight by a Roosters player, and that is the tackle count restarted. So this is big pressure for the Sydney City Roosters. As Stewart goes charging for the line. Plenty of space out on the right for the Magpies here. They're looking that way. Willis feeds it on for lead. Short ball for Pearson, and Pearson puts it down as he was looking to unload. And Clark has ruled that the ball has gone forward. And now trouble. I think it's, Rick, it's Hudson, rather, who's down. I know he went into the match with a high, the uh, left thigh rather heavily bandaged, as you can see. He's had a player, a teammate, go charging over the top of him. So the Roosters, Gary, certainly in the walls early on. Well, West throwing everything at them there. Unfortunately, early in the tackle count, they have taken the right option to go wide, but that pass from Andrew Willis was just a bit tough for Brandon Pearson to take. And now, of course, the ball's back with the Roosters and they'll, they should be able to work their way out of trouble here. Jason Hudson started the year. I know round one he was on the flank in their loss to the Tigers. <coughs> Match they probably should have got the two competition points. The Tigers with a big comeback on that afternoon. As I said at the top, these two teams sitting on four points. So the chance tonight to go or join the leading division of teams is now a penalty to the Roosters offside from that scrum and pushing and shoving mainly coming from the Magpie side of things caution for Willis well he just jumped the gun there a little bit didn't he he was, he was a couple of meters up from the line before the ball was cleared from the scrum and that is not a good kick another mistake for the Roosters as Leeds gets it back inside the Roosters half, so it's going against them at the moment, the Roosters. The tackle count restarted a short time ago. Now Leeds has been hit hard in that tackle and he's played it the wrong direction. And Clark has to award a penalty. I mean, there's no tougher penalty oh, than that. That's a cruel ruling, isn't it? You can see Andrew Leeds, he's been hit real hard. He doesn't know where he is. He's got up and it was almost instinct. We have a look here. Well, just his head must have hit the ground there when Walker threw him down. But Instinct has told him to get up and play the ball. No idea where he is. Look, where's his hooker? Why isn't he trying to help him there? Terry Mesher, your teammate needs you. Well, Andrew Leeds still receiving attention. In a stop-start beginning to this match. No score. Leeds had the chance for the opening points. And now warming up for the Magpies is Tony Wall. A man who picked up the tag of Mr. Stretch during the challenge to his challenge earlier this year. Let's go to the sideline, Steve Roach. Yeah, let's see if Eastern, uh, the Roosters can do something now. Pretty ordinary start. I don't think Gus Gould will be very happy. Looks to me like they're waiting for their teammates to uh, to explode. Well, it's the Roosters on the attack, 30 metres out from the line, and this is Brad Pike. Former Redcliffe boy in the Brisbane competition. There's Lamb. Nice short pass. Mackay getting involved. Coming in off the left wing. Now they spread out to the right, juggled there by Hall for Lowry. Tackled front on by Dunn, right in front of the Magpie Sticks. The crowd maybe a little bit more behind the Roosters. This is Iro. He had the hands, the hands free for a few seconds there. And Langmack had to finish off the tackle over the top as Hall swings it across for Lamb. Inside pass for Gaffey. Gaffey's lost it. And the knock on against the Roosters. And the Magpies, first time under pressure in defence, they've hung on. Well, we've seen both sides do it now. West did it a few moments ago up in the other end of the field. Now Gaffey, it wasn't a particularly tough tackle. He's just let go of the ball. I have to stress the humid conditions. I know we experienced 
Townsville in the first round for the clash of the Bulldogs and the Cowboys. I'd have to say my first impression of Darwin, it's a little more steamy here. Still yeah. that temperature up around the 27 degree mark. Yeah, and it not only makes it uncomfortable for the players, and they're trying to get their, their, their second win here after only a, a, eight minutes of the game, but the ball does get slippery, so I, I guess we've got to give them a little the benefit of the doubt here. Daris, a stinging tackle from Lowry, couldn't stop the ball as Georgialis. He's been one of their form players this year for the Magpies. As Wall plays it. Now Langmack the blind side, taken high I thought by Walker, slipped a lovely ball to Bell. Now away goes McGuinness, the cover comes across, knocked down by Werrett. Juni can't clean up and the Magpies come back up with the ball and the tackle count restarts again. So 25 metres out, Cherry Mesher stumbles as he gets to the 20. Well it was on out wide there and Mesher decided to run himself. To the right side now, Georgialis. Then fed across for Sedaris, inside ball for Pearson. And they've lost it. Pearson's on the flat of his back and hasn't moved. As Mackay came up with the ball, Pearson has been left behind back on the 20 for the Magpies. He's back on his feet. You can see him in the far left of the pitcher as the Roosters make the break now. Well, he's not healthy, Pearson. He's staggering back into the defensive line. An easy target if the Roosters want to run that way. Walker through Iro, then fed on for Rickardson. Not held in the tackle. He was looking for a support and Walker was just a little slow getting across. The Roosters with it. 35 metres out for the Magpies line as Lamb. Lowry hits the line and hits it hard. Cherry Mesher was the tackler. All playing the dummy half duties while O'Donnell is in the blood bin. Iroh has been dangerous in the early stages of this match. Five up for the Roosters. Walker with a job now. Cut out ball to Rickardson. He can't handle. And now McGuinness is away. It's an 80 metre chase. Juni in cover lines him up and pulls off the tackle. Well, fine tackle there by Juni from that Roosters mistake. Well, he's played the ball a bit early here. Well, Juni's offside. He wasn't ever at marker. He was right next to the play. Well, maybe he's uh, unsure of the rules there. Of course, new to rugby league. He did a great job. Showed tremendous speed to get across and cover Ken McGuinness quite easily. You see here McGuinness with the break. Looked like he was gone, but Juni put the big ones in early and did, did it easy in the tackle, but uh, it's here when he gets up to play the ball. Juni's never marking, and he dived on it. And on that replay too, it would have been, well, not nice for Darren Juni, but if he had have missed the tackle, Shane Werrett was the next man chasing McGuinness, and he's the fastest man in rugby league, and I would have liked to have seen what happened. What would have transpired over that next 30 metres, I have a feeling Werrett may have caught him. As Bill Dunner's tackle, 15 metres out from the line. Langmack calling for it. He's got Willis on his outside, but then takes the tackle. There's three Roosters defenders there. Sedaris has moved to the blind side here as Mesher turns it on for Stewart. He's lost the ball, but penalty goes to the Magpies, reefing the ball away. Mesher almost thinking of the quick tap. But now the Magpies will look for that two points that Leeds failed to get earlier. Tony Wall has the goal-kicking duties now. Well, this was the incident that led to the penalty. The hand going in there it's from Brad Pike, I think, and just ripping down on the ball. With the ball being so slippery, it is tough to hang on to. Locker on the sideline, these two front rowers for the Magpies, certainly leading the way in the hit-up, Stewart and Glenn Grief. Yeah, the most amazing thing about uh, Grief and Stewart is their size. They're, they're, they're solid in stature, but not, not the tallest of front rowers. I think they're doing very well at the moment. I don't think it'll be long before we see uh, Clinton O'Brien for the Eastern Suburbs Roosters uh, come into the game. He's a very good front rower also. I'll tell you what, Glenn Grief, I saw him get through a half a hole earlier in the match, and he looked really quick. In these conditions, it's tough for the big guys. He might uh, shine. So here is Tony Wall. Interesting lineup that he has. He took a few steps in, then a few steps back. Makes no difference. Two points to the Magpies. So Western Suburbs, off and running after 12 minutes, will take a break. The Magpies leading the Roosters by two points to nil. Welcome back to Richardson Park in Darwin. A warm, humid night. The crowd down on what the locals were expecting. But the Magpies on the scoreboard first here, leading the Roosters by two points to nil. 
Magpies flew into Darwin last night. The Roosters a little earlier in the day. And both have had training runs at Richardson Park to acclimatise themselves to these conditions, but I guess it's something that takes a, a little bit longer than a day to get used to. Well, they're not going to be used to it. You, you can't do it overnight. I know that talking to some of the trainers before the match for the Roosters, Brian Canavan was saying that uh, they, they have taken in a lot of water and a lot of fruit, but um, certainly they're going to have to use their players off the interchange bench wisely tonight. They're going to tire. It's Phil Gould, of course, who's had a busy week away from the Sydney City Roosters camp, got together on Thursday night at training. In the meantime, another drop ball from Western Suburbs, and the Roosters on the attack, 35 metres out from the Magpies line as Lamb, the short pass on to Prothero. On an angle coming back in field was tackled by Bill Dunn. Lamb again. This time finds Gaffey. Dangerous that wide. Flung around in the tackle. The tackle was from Willis, the 5'8. Andrew Willis as Lamb again. Away it comes to Pike. He was taken high in the tackle. Clark set across the chest. Pike probably the biggest man in the eastern suburbs, or rather the Roosters pack as Lamb. Probing for a hole and Walker has taken in the tackle. They're running plenty of angles, but not making a whole lot of ground at the moment. The Sydney City Roosters is on the last tackle. It's Lamb. Bounced off the head of Gaffey. The Western Suburbs side back with the ball. Well, that's just good defence there from West. In the last couple of tackles, we saw Lamb probing across field and they held off. They didn't, no one come up out of the line. And once again, on that occasion, they didn't drop back looking, waiting for them to kick. They just held their line, made the tackles and, uh, and forced the Roosters into an error. Jerry Mesher goes from a dart from dummy half. Made 10 metres. Now on the halfway line. There's wall out of dummy half. Another five made. Nothing to flash about the Western Suburbs attack, but they're making ground as Sidaris. Another 10 metres. Now 31 metres out from the Roosters line. And doesn't Sidaris love jumping in there at, at dummy half? He feels a bit out of position, I can tell. The high ball from Willis. More pressure for Juni, and again. He's equal to the task, Darren Juni. Two out of two for the fullback. Well, isn't he safe back there? And you get that out of your repertoire now, the Magpies. There's not much point kicking high bombs to him, but particularly if, if there's not a real good chase on him. Safe, very safe here. You'd start to put the ball on the ground and get your chases through. Well, a very good take indeed from Darren Juni. Of course, his time in the rugby ranks spent mainly on the centre and the wing. Here is Rickardson. Willis in the tackle. But just getting back to Darren Juni, even though he played on the wing in the centre, I mean, plenty of pressure on the backs in Rugby Union to, to field the high ball. A lot more kicking to those players than in Rugby League, and Juni very much comfortable under the high ball as Pike again at his forward. Well, the other reports coming out of last week's game with the Juni he was just superb in defence. He's obviously adapted to the game well. We've seen him pull off one important tackle tonight already on Ken McGuinness. So he hasn't had any problems adapting to that part of the game. If he taken in the tackle, five metres inside Magpies territory. There's Juni this time filling in a dummy half. Made seven metres. Last tackle for the Roosters. Walker again this time goes for the low ball for the sideline. Knocked down by McGuinness, but play on. Got away from the tackle of Iro, and Iro in turn was a little slow to get to his feet. Walker was the man who finished off the tackle. This is Tony Wall, jumper 30 on for Andrew Leeds. Now away to Pearson. Getting the ball up like a front row of the centre. Brandon Pearson. And Langmack taking the ball up to the line a little more than what we're accustomed to with Paul Langmack. He's a, a ball player who more often than not, passes before he gets to the line, and one error in the centres. The Magpie's not happy with that one. Well, and George Arliss wouldn't be happy with it. It was an ordinary ball, and uh, very, very tough there for Andrew Willis to pick up. Well, Blocker, I guess the drop ball, certainly on that occasion, you couldn't blame the conditions. No, not really. It was, a, it was a poor pass. I don't think both coaches would be happy with their halves. Look, I've seen Andrew Walker play a lot. He's a very exciting player. Has not been involved in the game yet. And the Magpies leading by two points to nil as Walker. Nice ball to Hudson. Well, how'd, well, he, go, how'd he go on that time, Block? <laughs> as soon as you say it, they didn't do something, don't they? The coaches love me. Hudson again elusive. Away from one, and again another one of the Magpies has been left behind. So they're down to 12 men at the moment as Gaffey. Spun away almost from the tackle of Sidaris. It's I think it's Pearson, the man who's out of the play at the moment, as 
Lamb comes across field. Dummy to Walker. Lamb all the way himself. Adrian Lamb, the first try for the Roosters. And not a hand laid on him. Well, he made that look very easy, but I'll tell you what, he had runners. He had players on the outside, and someone dropped off on the inside. It made the defence hesitate. Beautiful run there from Adrian Lamb. See, the ball comes out. He just shows the ball on the outside. Walker, I think it is, drops off on the inside. Hes defence hesitates, and Mesha, well, he's just followed him. All he could do was stop him from running around under the post, but didn't look like getting a hand on him. Adrian Lamb, the man on screen, linking up with the Roosters last year and has certainly made an impression. Another player, formerly of the Brisbane competition, and he gets the first try of the evening here at Richardson Park. And a good one from the number seven. Typical halfbacks try. And the Roosters up by four points to two. David O'Donnell, their captain, is back on from the blood bin. Graham Mackay, in turn, has the chance to add the extras. He's kicked 10 from 16 in 95. And 24 points in total, as a matter of fact, for the Roosters. Former Magpie, former Panther, Graham Mackay, and former International as well. And this kick, not a hard one from 12 metres out. He could just about throw it over. He loves to kick it and gets it. So the Roosters open up a four-point lead. They haven't been inside the Magpies 20 all that often. And they've come up with a first four-pointer. They lead by six points to two. Blocker on the sideline. Yeah, well, you can blame Billy Dunn, the Western Suburbs second rower, for that try. He sprinted up over, out of the line, and Adrian Lamb's uh, dummy to Andrew Walker, and uh, he was in no man's land. Clinton O'Brien just about to come on for the Sydney City Roosters. If you look at that try again, just not a hand laid on, Adrian Lamb. And I should mention, too, there's Clinton O'Brien in jumper 40, but Brandon Pearson was out of the line the entire time the Roosters were on the attack there. He's back now but he did receive attention all the time while that kick was being lined up he was down for quite some time brandon pierce in the magpie center as this is lowry from the kickoff it was a good one from the magpies right to the corner and what's that done is meant that the roosters have to bring it back out of their own danger zone and the magpies in turn will be hoping that they can force an error as o'donnell well, the Magpies with a man out of the line once again. Glenn Grief down. Now, they've got to try to have 13 players up in the, well, on the field and playing at any one time. Grief down with some cramps or a, a problem with his boot. He's just found himself back in the line. And well, they've been let off a little bit there. We see this David O'Donnell just back on the field and took his eyes off the ball for a moment. What a happy night for the stand-in captain of the Roosters. This is George Arles working this scrum. This is good field position for the Magpies. Let's see if they can use it. Tony Wall. No sign of, of Andrew Leeds coming back onto the park. Would be a loss. There's Mesha. Again, another scamper from dummy half. Willis now away to grief. Good ground made by the front row of the Roosters. Just for a moment stood back and watched. Pike was the tackler with O'Donnell. There's Stewart. Backs his way almost over the try line. It took four to get him down. It's five tackles used up for the Western Suburbs side as Georgialis now fed on to Langmack. A crook pass across the line. They can't handle for Bell. They did have an excuse. It wasn't a good pass from Langmack. I would dare say just slipped out of the hands all the way along the line. Yeah, we see Langmack. He's just trying to shovel it along and yeah, obviously slipped out. And that's happened a couple of times tonight. The ball must be getting fairly slippery with the heat. Prothero there. He almost had a little juggle on, on the hip. As so O'Brien now gets his chance. Brad Pike was the player replaced. As the Roosters with it, 10 metres inside their own half. They lead by six points to two. This is Iroh. Now across for Walker. Kick finding some space. He can't. Smith was well positioned. One of the leading try scorers from last year, Paul Smith, scored plenty. And the ball with Tony Wall. He gets straight up the middle. Nigel Gaffey, the tackler. Well, he's looked all right since he's come on for Andrew Leeds. Tony Wall, obviously, keen to make an impression. He's run the ball fairly hard, and of course, the only two points so far for the Magpies. This is Grief under Sedaris. The ball going firing back. Wall again gets his hands on the ball. Five metres inside the Roosters' half. Blindside play from Georgialis, inside for McGuinness. Five tackles used up without a handling error. 
Willis on the last. It came off the back of Nigel Gaffey to Darren Juni. He'll go close to the sideline and goes over the sideline. And that is a mistake on the part of the fullback. Well, the moment he ran there, it looked as though he was going to be in, in all sorts of trouble unless he could stay low to the ground. The ball ricocheting there off one of his teammates, Nigel Gaffey, I think it was, elected to go down the sideline. They showed it to him. Let's wear it with another teammate helping push him over the side. Black mark. The book of Darren Juni in this match, but he's been good up till then. It's McGuinness's tackle there. Good tackle from Luke Rickardson, ball and all, and finished it off into the ground as Sedaris. He broke quickly from that scrum to get onto the right side of the field. This is Smith. It's only earlier, I've got to say, Jim Sedaris looks lost. He's, he's, he's in a dummy half there. But he's been on a few occasions. Just, he just follows the, the play at dummy half, and he's getting pushed out by Mesher. And second row, he just looks so uncomfortable. The guy's dynamic out of, out of dummy half, and I think he needs to play there. Adlib football from the Magpies. It could pay off, though, as now McGuinness got away from the tackle of Rickardson. Now the Georgialis. He turns the man inside. Paul Bell and tackle 10 metres out from the Roosters' line. McGuinness slips into dummy half. They've gone to slip down the blind side. Back the ball came, and Bell has tackled again. Still five metres out from the line, and that is five tackles for the Magpies. Georgialis to Willis. The grubber kick. Willis all himself. It's cleaned up at the back by June E. He doesn't think he forced it, but Clark says he has, and that will be a line dropout. But again, Juni, the hero at the back. He's covered that up very well, hasn't he? This little kick here through by Willis. Looked like it was going to hit the post for a moment. Juni put himself on the line, didn't mind. Well, he hasn't grounded it there. He wanted to get up and play on. Maybe the referee ruled that he was held momentarily by Willis. And now, of course, they have to drop the ball out from their own in goal. Another close shave for the Roosters, but... Block Darren Juni again equal to the assignment. Yes, he's uh, still regaining consciousness, but uh, Andrew Lee should uh, should be back. So the Magpies with it. 25 metres out from the Roosters' line. This is Bill Dunn with a little left foot step. Tackled by the Roosters' try scorer, Adrian Lamb. Mesher now with grief. Lovely ball from the front row to Jarlis. 10 metres out from the line. There's no support now. It comes in the form of McGuinness. McGuinness is over. I'll give him to Nix, but Ken McGuinness has the Magpies' first try. He was a long way back. Georgialis was screaming for support. And McGuinness arrived right on time and a six-all scoreline. Yeah, the ball thrown out wide here. Of course, this second phase play, there's plenty of Roosters defenders in there, so they're all getting dragged in. Coming across he field here, Georgialis. Looked like McGuinness was covered by Gaffey, but just stepped out of the tackle. Rickardson hardly got a hand on him. Juni was too late. Great finishing there from Ken McGuinness. It is Glenn Greek popping the ball back beautifully to Georgialis. And he saw that his man was coming inside. McGuinness, oh, Nigel Gaffey looked to have him covered, but he just stepped out of the tackle too easy. So Ken McGuinness, try number four for 1995. Played for the... Australian under-19 side last year, Tom Radonikas. Would like what he's seen over the last five minutes. Although maybe not. <laughs> yeah, it's McGuinness, the player that he was shouting at. I think it was just words of encouragement. In a fight up sort of way. There's Tony Wall with his second chance for two points. And that is perfect right off the boot. So the Magpies find themselves in front. We'll take a break. Western Suburbs leading the Roosters, eight points to six. Rugby League tonight from the top end on Nine's Wide World of Sports. It was Auckland last night. Darwin tonight. And back to good old Parramatta Stadium tomorrow. It was Western Suburbs leading the Roosters by eight points to six, and they've settled down 
to some good football. The Magpies, as Sedaris it is playing the ball, 25 metres out from his own line. Let's take a comment from the sideline, Steve Roach. Yeah, Western Suburbs, although Ken McGuinness scored that try, if we watch when their forwards or do take the ball up or they do run from dummy half, all their team stands back and waits for the next play. They've got to play the play that's happening right at that time. Sure, with a very flat pass from dummy half. And in fact, Clark has got the call from his linesman, I dare say, there. It was a forward pass to Paul Langmack. He was a little late in giving the decision. It was definitely, I think, on the call of the linesman. Well, it didn't look too bad from here. No, we're not looking at a wide shot there. But I must say, on, on first impression, I didn't think at all that there's anything in it. The linesman, he rules. As the Roosters winning that scrum. Lamb, Juni into the line, but not at pace. Tackled by Tony Wall. This is Gaffey. What a bad miss in the lead up to that try. And the man going to dummy half was the other player who missed the tackle, Luke Rickardson. To make up for that is Clinton O'Brien. First touch of the ball, tackle 25 metres out from the Magpies line. Centre field, it's O'Donnell. Lamb again. Across the line through Walker. Nice short pass from Prothero to Hudson. Not much of Jason Hudson, but it's dangerous out wide as Lamb. Couple of dummies. Iro, Shepard from the Roosters. Play on, says referee Stephen Clark. They almost gave themselves up the Roosters. And Juni, the player who was guess the source of this obstruction, copped a heavy knock. Now that kick, how much doing is Brandon Pearson brings it back to the 20. Tony Wall, he's got through plenty of hit-ups since he's come on this fullback. He is, he's doing plenty of work. Interesting to see here, Blythe Blocker said before, they are a bit one out. Glenn Grief there, very good yards he's made, but he had no option there in support, and of course, that makes it pretty easy for the defenders all to zone in on him. The Magpies working this ball upfield. Sadaris, now to Georgialis. Well, that is a terrible pass. It just was thrown deliberately forward, but I think if a Magpie had caught it, it would just about have been a Roosters penalty. He just fed that ball a good meter in front of him. Well, he went to feed it. Look, once again, we're probably going to get sick of saying it tonight, but that ball, it must be so slippery with the heat. Players don't make mistakes like that, or that easily. He was directing the pass at his teammate and it slipped straight out. Interesting here with the forming of this scrum, Ken McGuinness on the left flank. And they move Paul Bell into the centres. There's now a good run from Clinton O'Brien. Tackled 35 metres out from the Magpies line. Rickardson goes on the attack for the Roosters and tackled front on by Willis. And so there was grief. Mackay now. There's a handful, this winger Graham Mackay, big strong player. 15 metres out from the Magpies line. O'Donnell to Lamb, juggling effort from the number seven. Tackled there by Brent Stewart. Last tackle for the Roosters. Iroh, left footer from the second rower. Beautifully placed by Tony Iroh, and Paul Smith can do no more than take it over the dead ball line. Yeah, the big fella, Tony Iroh, going across the field. Looked like he was just going to, he was trying to link up with his supports. But dropped it on the left foot and very well placed, very well weighted. Jack no, High. Yeah, no choice there for Paul Smith but to grab it and run dead. He was almost over the dead ball line as he picked it up. So now the Roosters chance to put on some sustained attack. There's no hurry with the line dropout. I can see another change in the Roosters lineup. Steve Roach on the sideline. Yes, Jason Hudson uh, can't go on anymore in the game. He had a, hand in, a hamstring injury, injury going into the game. Peter Clark taking his place, formerly of Manly and Balmain. Oh, hamstring injury. Drop ball from the Roosters. It was a forced pass from Darren Juni. And the Magpies just won the race to the ball. There wasn't a great deal of enthusiasm from the Roosters players to get to the loose ball. And that is not a good sign. Sedaris. Did a little U-turn out of that play. Well, it's not a good sign when it's on first tackle, and now the Magpies, of course, with the chance to get it upfield. They're sure away with Stewart. Two front rowers doing their fair share of work, Stewart and Grief. They really stick to the middle of the field when they're bringing the ball out. The Magpies, here we see finally after three tackles, they've decided to throw it a bit wide, and they're finding space out wide. But when they're rucking it out from their line, they just go straight up the middle of the field. And the Roosters are doing it fairly easy in, in covering them up. Tony Wallace tackle. That's a permanent switch, by the way, with McGuinness on the flank. Bell playing in the centres as Willis. The kick knocked down by Rickardson. It came off the leg. 
Now, what's he going to rule? Well, he's gone into touch in any case. Well, Paul Langmack was cruising over for that ball, thinking he was going to run out. Saw it wasn't, had to look up, and then had to put the pedal down. Fortunately, with the conditions as they are, he, well, he slid straight out. Rickardson certainly played at the ball with a, with a leg. And Rickardson was able to finish off Langmack, so it works out all right for the Roosters. They'll have the scrum feed. Western Suburbs leading by eight points to six. Little under seven minutes remaining in this first half of football. This is the replacement player, Peter Clark, on. Well, the manly player, Peter Clark, as Lamb pass on to O'Brien. And that tackle over the top, yes, Clark's going to call him out. Glenn Grief it is. What was it there, a shoulder that hit him? Or? Well, he's got Brandon Pearson, the player. Let's watch it again. Just tries to get him to, well, no, it's a... It's a little ungainly, isn't it? That slips into the careless category. Well, it is careless, particularly when you see the Roosters player lying on the ground still. He's been hit pretty hard. Not only did he cop it well, high, maybe across the chin, but the back of his head as he came down as well. Well, with O'Brien down, we'll take a break. Western Suburbs leading the Roosters, eight points to six. Sorry, mate. Hey, um, a block? Yeah, mate. Yep. Yeah. Can I talk? I just want to check how slippery that footy is at half time, mate. Yeah, no worries, mate. No worries. It looks pretty oh, wet on oh, mud or shit on it. <laughs> Welcome back to Richardson Park in Darwin. Clinton O'Brien, very groggy. He's going to be assisted from the field. The Roosters picked up a penalty from that play. And this is Jason Lowry tackle, 20 metres out from the Magpies line. The Roosters big opportunity here, Lamb showing the ball. Gaffey it is, who hits it up to within 15 metres of the try line. With O'Brien off, Brad Pike is the player who's returned to the park as Lamb. Across it came for Iro. he's looking for a man on his outside, it's Darren Journey taken front on by Bell. Picked up and pushed back. The Roosters on the Magpies 20 as Pike now. And again, a driving tackle. Really putting some shoulder into the defence. It was Jim Sedaris that time. Lamb across the line to Walker. Longer ball still to Rickardson. Inside for Prothero. And still, they're on the Magpies 20. Three straight tackles. It's like a brick wall at the moment as Gaffey. He's put the ball down. He's not having a happy night. Nigel Gaffey in defence into attack for the Magpies. Cherry Mesher. And Nigel Gaffey there looked like he was going to kick it one, for one moment. Pulled it back in, went through the hole, and uh, well, he just didn't have control of the footy. Here he is here, he just let go of it. Might have had an assist by the Western Suburbs arm on the way down. I think the ball is now Langmack. The ball has slipped away, Georgialis. Just tackle around the ankles there, Adrian Lamb was the player. And he's hurt now, Steve Georgialis, so... Another stoppage, Clark will ask that the ball be moved across field for a teammate to play it. Georgialis has made the recovery. In any case, Mesher will play it, but here it is again, Georgialis. That was the second tackle from Pike that finished him up. As now the Magpies go through, Sadaris. Inside ball, he heard the call and it was Luke Rickardson. Well, he saw Ken McGuinness flying, he was trying to back him up. He, he looked, but then uh, he was on his blind side and decided to pass it. Now Shane Werrell away, he got away from two, away from Sadaris, then away from Willis. The Roosters, if they can spread the ball left quickly, well, this is Sinbin time, one would think there. There was a try on the left-hand side if the Roosters could get up, play the ball and spin it wide. And Clark has just given the penalty to the Roosters. Shane Werrett, he can motor. And they went straight into attacking mode. Out on the right-hand side of the field, the Magpies had no one at home, and I agree, Andrew. So give someone 10 in the bin. Tony Wall would have been the player. There's some good front-on defence. The tackle from Dunn rattled the bones of Brad Pike. Lamb, Gaffey, lovely short ball to Clark, and he's tackled by Cherry Mesher. 15 metres out from the Magpies line. The Roosters looking dangerous. It's Lamb, then away to Lowry. That's the defence they need. Lock up the ball carrier. Paul Langmack and Bill Dunn, the tacklers. O'Donnell. Iro now with it. Ball along the ground and Pearson's away. The chase is coming from Gaffey. Pearson looks to have the pace. Gaffey can't get him. They come again. Graham Mackay's there. Well, it's two on one. And Pearson could have got the pass to Smith. 
Graham Mackay able to clean up that manoeuvre. There's Smith now, tackled 15 metres out from the line. All of a sudden, this game has gone up, not just one gear, make it two as Terry Mesher. Almost a very soft try for the hooker. Just a few metres short of the try line, Tony Wall. Then Willis. Now McGuinness taking it on the bounce. Then away to Sedaris, the little grubber kick. Andrew Walker comes up with a ball, and then as he pushed over the sideline, Clark rules the penalty. He kept the feet airborne as the feet went over the line, but he never grounded them. Well, he was doing the rap dance there on his back, spinning around. Look at it here, he's dived on the ball as it came across towards the sideline. Well, this was the break here, and what about this chase from Nigel Gaffey? Not having a great night, but certainly a big effort that to get to him. He slowed him up enough for Graham Mackay to get there. And it just, well, Mackay's covered him. He just couldn't get the ball back inside to Smith, and no other Roosters were at home. Steve Roach on the sideline. Yeah, well, that was a beautiful break from Brendan Pearson, a 70 metre, but Paul Smith, the winger, goes into dummy half and runs from dummy half. Eastern Suburbs were all in all sorts of trouble on the left-hand side of the field, and he blew it. It was too late. As Graham Mackay has dropped the ball, more pressure for the Roosters. Now, play will be stopped here, and I think it's Darren Juni, the player it is. Darren Juni is back on the goal line. And play continues with Paul Smith down the right flank. Well, we've got the Roosters trainer pleading to the referee to have a look, and Stephen Clark, they've got two ambulance men with people on the field as well. And now Clark has got the message. And Darren Juni is the player who was down. He was hurt in a tackle on Cherry Mesher just out from the goal line. And it's not looking too good for Darren Juni. Well, we can see there he's moving around a little bit. I suggest they've told him to try to keep still. They're going to take him off the field. And he's just been told, obviously, he's... Here it is again. As Mesher ran the ball forward, and that was just a heavy knock to the head. It was the, the knees of Cherry Mesher when he took the tackle. He took the full impact right on the side of the face. Yeah, well, I guess he just got his head in the wrong side in that tackle. He put his body in the, on the line, but he, he's come off worse for wear for it. I don't like to say it, but I was at a game where Brett Papworth attempted the same sort of tackle oh. on Rod Wishart. And that is almost identical. That was a few seasons back, and he's gone straight for the back of his neck, Darren Juni, on the way down. But as you can see, full movement of the legs and arms. So precautionary. I don't know what uh, they've, they've actually got here in the way of medical equipment. The stretcher looks like it's been around for many, many years as now Dr. Neil Halpin comes onto the field for the Roosters. It looks like Dr. Halpin may have some form of... Uh, I don't know, it's a towel. It's a new form of stretcher. A brown towel. I think is that normally the Jordan frame would be called for in this situation, but he's in the best of care now with, with Dr. Halpin out there. Yeah, let's get another look at it here. You see there he's, he's half evaded to tackle Mesher, so Juni has just, he seemed to be on the right side, but Mesher ended up coming straight over the top of him. He's grabbed straight away. You see his left arm come up. Juni's left arm comes up and grabs himself on the, on the back of the neck. Oh, yeah, and he's, he's in some pain. He knows instantly that he's hurt himself. A great shame because he's been close to perfect at the back. Just one error in the match, but has certainly relieved a number of attacking raids from the Magpies, both with a high ball and with the breaks. As a second line of defence, or last line of defence, Jenny has been in great form. Well, Hudson's the player who's warming up now, and he wasn't in the best of way when he came from the field. And I'll tell you what, there's been plenty of changes made in this first half. Both teams with the four fresh reserves tonight, but still able, or only able, to make the six changes in the match. We've only got 
just over a minute till half time. They've had a good five or six minutes off here. You know, play a minute and go off for another ten. I, I dare say that they'll all be looking forward to it. So they found a neck brace for Darren Journey, but the pitchers tell the story. He's got full movement of the his uh, legs and arms. And totally conscious throughout that tackle. He never lost consciousness. And we have the football to continue with the Roosters again under enormous pressure. Now that's the last we'll see of Darren Journey for this evening. And it's the Magpies on the attack. 15 metres out from the line, Sadaris hitting the line at pace was great. Great ball to Smith and gets the ball over the try line. What about that play straight after the break? I guess plenty of time to plan it. But the ball movement there from the Magpies certainly made it difficult for the Roosters. Watch the run of Glenn Grief when he hits the line in this play. It comes wide, Sadaris back inside and just that short ball for Grief. And he's held it up very nicely. And Sadaris again, the short pass grief, and in support Paul Smith and Walker standing where Darren Journey would have been to have to attempt to make the try saving tackle. But at that speed, they weren't going to stop Paul Smith. His first try for 1995, and I mentioned earlier, plenty of tries last year, in fact, 18. So he's on the board now for 1995, but he's had to wait to the fifth week of the competition. That was a good rugby league try from the Magpies. And they're right on top. And I say on top, it started with the mistakes made by the Roosters. And Tony Wall with another chance for two points for the Magpies. And again, it's from close range. Interesting little two-step he does before he kicks. He's in position, then goes back a couple, then sideways, then slowly, and gets another two. But they go over. That's the important thing. So three from three for Tony Wall and a very handy lead for Western Suburbs. 14 points to six. Let's get an update on Darren Journey, blocker. Just talking to the uh, the Roosters doctor, Neil Halpin. Uh, he said he, he thought, Journey said he heard a little click in his neck, but he's assured me that he's all right. But uh, the Roosters in all sorts of trouble. They'll have to put on uh, injured Jason Hudson again because Peter Clark's already into the game. And Brendan Hall, I think, slowed down a little bit too much for the backs now. Well, the right time to score a try in those minutes leading up to half time and in fact that is the break i think western suburbs are fairly happy with their first 40 minutes work the roosters had the lead early but western suburbs go to the break with that eight point advantage 14 points to six welcome back to richardson park in darwin both teams electing not to go from the field in that half time break his first half statistics with the Magpies leading by 14 points to six. Line breaks is where one area that the Magpies have had the advantage and certainly Gary, the Roosters have had to come up with more tackles. Yes, they have had to make more tackles. There's not too much difference there in a lot of the stats. Of course, the Magpies have put the ball over the line three times compared to the Roosters one. I think that's the big difference. The Magpies have had a lot more possession just due really to the mistakes, poor mistakes, early tackle mistakes that the Roosters have made. So the Roosters get play underway with the second half, first use of the ball. Running from right to left for the second half. They need to score first after the break to stay in this match is O'Donnell. Tackle came over the top there from Sedaris. I know that Phil Gould at the break had plenty to say to Nigel Gaffey. He's the man playing the ball right now. This time it's Tony Iro driving the ball centre field. The last tackle, 42 metres out from the Magpies line. This is Walker with a kick on the last. Covered up by Tony Wall. He really has impressed since coming on the field, Tony Wall. Let's hear what the coaches said at half time. Steve Roach. Yeah, well, I think Phil Gould, uh, he's very, very disappointed. I think he was aiming a bit of his criticism at Nigel Gaffey because he is the senior player in the side and he needs to lift 
Uh, they're in all sorts of trouble. He's asking his players to rise to the challenge. Uh, Walker has moved back to fullback. That indicates how much trouble they really are in. A lot of players playing with injury. He said, look, you're just not moving off the line. We've got to go to the Western Suburbs players. They're causing us all types of trouble in the middle of the ruck. We've got to tighten up there. For Western Suburbs, uh, Tommy Redonick has wrapped in their first half, especially the front rowers, Glenn Grief and Brent Stewart. They're making the yards, but they must have a little bit more support. And his big thing was watch Iro and that lamb. The little halfback. If he scores another try like that, Tommy's going to get right off. We see that kick downfield there from the Magpies block. Anything said about this slippery ball by any of the players? No, no, not really. I think, uh, well, I was uh, mostly over in the in the Roosters and they were all uh, had their heads down. Gus was doing most of the talking. But you can see a bit of dew on the ball or it's very wet and slippery. Uh, the Roosters with it. You can see 10 metres out from their own line. With the ball is Peter Clark just inside the 20 and it seems like they've gone back to safety first football to get this second half underway just one pass off the ruck and taking that, that five ten meters where they can Larry who plays it just outside the 30 and they've got through the six pretty quick and most importantly got through the six without a handling error and that kick evades Tony Wall turns him right around and gives the Roosters chases a chance to trap him inside the 20 that's exactly what they do. Tony Iro, the first man there, with Brendan Hall. This is McGuinness. He shifted between centre and wing during that first half. Now Stewart spun away from the tackle. 15 metres inside his own half. And the Magpies making good ground through Bell. So both teams with similar tactics now, just the one pass off the ruck. This is Langmack, wrapped up by David O'Donnell. Four tackles used up for the Magpies. Sidaris is another easy 10. Short ball for Dunn. And look, in the space of five tackles with no more than one pass on each play, they've worked it upfield 60 metres and a good kick on the last. Can it wait? Goes over the dead ball line. So back to the 20, the tap for the Roosters. Well, they're making big yards, aren't they, the Magpies? We saw it. Jim Sedaris get in just before and this on the last tackle, get himself involved. Given uh, Jim, Steve Georgialis plenty of time to make a good kick there, but uh, unfortunately it's run dead. Blood bin here. Bill Dunn's the player. Scars of battle there on Billy Dunn. Off he goes to the blood bin. In the meantime, the Roosters with a football. Jason Lowry up to the 30. They're down by... 14 points to six. Block who have we got on there for build-up? Oh, I didn't really see uh, who went in. I was just going to make a comment about uh, Western Suburbs look like they've come up to play. Plenty of sting in their defence, and that's that's probably why they're on top in this game at the moment. Mark Horro's the player, in fact, in jumper number 27. This is O'Donnell. Got you on the hop there, Block. Yes, you did. I'm, I'm down here, and Coxie's talking to me, mate. Why are you talking to me? Shoo him away. Eric Coxie would be kicking you off the field, wouldn't he? The Roosters putting some passes together. There's a short pass from Iro to Rickardson. Iro now to Walker. The high ball from Andrew Walker. It is a high kick. It'll bring down Space Junk. That kick dropped by Tony Wall. It'll be a try to Andrew Walker. Well, Tony Wall has made a massive blunder. The Roosters have four points. Andrew Walker, the chief chaser. And he gets the try, 14 points to 10. Well, we were wrapping Tony Wall just moments ago. He's under this ball. It was it was a high Andrew kick. Walker, Certainly he had a lot of time to get under it. But have a look at here, Peter Clark, number 30. All he wanted to do was take Wall out there. May have just put him off a little bit. They've come up with, well, the, the try they needed immediately after the break. Number 30, Peter Clark. He just, well, he just looks like he clipped Wall there. He may have tried to take him out and following up his own kick. Walker got his team back into it. Well, both coaches said handling errors were going to decide this match. And that one has opened the door right up for the Roosters. Andrew Walker, four tries this year. I read during the week that he spoke about renewed confidence, getting his game back on track. He's found that confidence at the Roosters after some lean times at St George. It sounded like he got his life back in order before he got his football back, on, back in order, and it's all paying off at the moment. So this to make it a two-point ball game. Graham Mackay, again, it's not a hard kick. It's 12 metres out. Not far to the left-hand side of the post. Graham Mackay, it is a two-point ball game. 
Rugby League tonight from Darwin. And the Magpies leading by two, 14 points to 12. We'll take a break. Welcome back, and that is a good sign there for the Roosters. Good news for young Darren Juni. Back on the sideline with the ice pack, and Steve on the sideline maybe contemplating a return to the field. Yes, it certainly looks like that at the moment. Uh, Neil Halpin talking to uh, Gus Gould at the moment. He's probably saying there's no problem, and he's pretty keen, Darren Juni, to get back on. And right back in this ball game, the Roosters. It's been a good contest. Certainly on the scoreboard, there have been some handling errors, but conditions have... Paid a long way towards that. Oh, well, that ball's a metre forward. It's a Brad Pike. And he did cop the tackle too. It was a fairly high one. I was looking at Clark. He ruled across the chest, a pat of the shoulder. Here it is again. O'Donnell. The pass has oh, <laughs> oh, certainly floated forward. Not much in the tackle there from Horro. But certainly that was a that was a scrum, if not a penalty. And Walker with a kick again on the last tackle for the Roosters. Handy grubber as well. McGuinness trapping it with a boot. And now trying to get on the outside of Walker. Can't do that. Walker wraps him up. The Magpies, 15 metres out from their own try line. The Roosters with all their fingers crossed that the Magpies will come up with an error here. Paul Smith is playing it. Now away to Brent Stewart. Full step there. Evaded the tackle of Hall. But you just see how much that, that try to the Roosters from Walker lifted them. They've all... They're all getting off the line real quick. They looked a bit ordinary right at the start of the second half, waiting for something to happen. But they're right back in the match now at 14 points to 12. And as you said, just waiting for a Magpies error. Good play from Sedaris on the last, tapping it forward. And then the kick downfield puts all sorts of pressure on Walker. Ending up just diving on the ball. Now Shane Werrett. Hasn't had the ball in his hands all that often, but is dangerous every time he has. Rickardson now. A loose arm across the top came from Pearson. Well, they're getting quick play, the balls. Good yards out of dummy half here, the Roosters. This is Adrian Lamb. Telegraphed the pass in some way there to Tony Iro, and it was well read by the Magpies' defence. As Lamb, that was a dreadful ball. A dreadful pass from the seven. Poor old Brad Pike, he's had some shockers. Well, not just... A, it looked like Pike wasn't ready for it for a moment. He got the dummy first. And then the ball came and Pike had backed off a bit. Now the ball was way out in front. Well, this has given the chance for Western Suburbs. I think Pike was running as a decoy. And then stopped. So they put the blame on both players on that case. In that situation. Scrum one for the Magpies. This is Willis. Walker who's shifted the fullback had to come right up in the line to make the tackle. Tony Wall, all that stretching has paid off tonight. He's had a fine game, with the exception of that bomb just a few moments ago was Mesha. Georgialis. Long ball to McGuinness, went straight through the hands and over the sideline. So the Roosters not under pressure for all that long, just a matter of two or three tackles. You're just unable to maintain the pressure there. Going to be interesting with young Tony Wall. We'll have another look at this pass from Georgialis, straight through the hands of McGuinness. But Tony Wall, he's dropped that bomb. It'll be interesting next time one goes in the air, just how confident he is under it. Blocker on the sideline, Steve, I guess fair to say that the team that can score next should just about win this match. Well, exactly what the coaches said at half-time. They've got to get points on the board, both teams, and uh, and take the advantage. Look, just talking about Brad Pike a little bit earlier, I think he's had a tremendous uh, a tremendous effort tonight, considering he was playing in the Brisbane comp for Red, Redcliffe last year, and considering that he's missing... Hermanson and Salvatore, probably their two best strike forwards. A good comp, that Brisbane comp block, I can tell you. And Redcliffe, the top side. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Penalty conceded by Mark Horro. Clear away from the ruck. Interesting attempt at playing the ball from Luke Rickardson. But they get the penalty and now on the attack, 40 metres out from the line. Here goes Pike again. 26 years of age, first year in the Winfield Cup. O'Donnell in the dummy half. He has runners in Lowry, picks off Gaffey. 
taken in the tackle by Sidaris. They're right in front of the Western Suburbs posts, but 25 metres out, the overhead ball from Iro. Then across it came to Clark, trying to get on the outside of his man. He wasn't able to. Still in great position, the Roosters. This is Lowry. Dropped the shoulder into Sidaris. Good pass away to Walker, then to Lamb. Oh, he should have moved that on straight away, Lamb. Brendan Hall outside and a couple of players. Could still be on on the right-hand side of the park. It was Hall. And another mistake from the Roosters. And in such good position. Down by two. They needed to make something of it. Well, Hall's tried that short ball there. A real tough one there for Gaffey. We can't blame him on that occasion. But they've just got to come up with the ball for a full set of six tackles. Get the fifth and reef it in the air. Got the young fullback there. He's just... For the Magpies, Tony Wall, he's dropped one already. I'd be testing him out next chance I got. Another injury now. Just as a chance to look towards tomorrow night. On Channel 9, the Sunday night football will have the Sydney Bulldogs up against the Western Reds. On 6.30, our coverage. And the Western Reds, who've had some good results in their debut year in the Winfield Cup, will be hoping that they can get another one tomorrow night against the Bulldogs. Max, the player receiving attention. Let's watch it again. Put the head down in the tackle. Well, hard to see. Probably collected the knee of Tony Iroh over the top accidentally. So play continues minus Paul Langmack. And the Magpies 25 metres out from their own line. Stewart, it was playing it. This is Paul Bell. Paul Langmack looks fine now. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm not saying he'd, he'd bung on an injury, but. Certainly his side needs a rest, and he's a pretty smart character. He's been around a long, long time, Paul Langmack. All the way back to 1983 to find his debut in the top grade with the Bulldogs as Sadaris with a kick. In fact, he's been around since they were known as the Berries. This is Walker at the back for the Roosters. What about Paul Langmack's date of birth? He was born in 1966, he reckons. Huh? I'm a 62 baby, and I don't think I'm that much older than Paul Langmack. Steve Roach on the sideline. Yes, Mark Pothero leaving the uh, the field for the Roosters. Barry Ward, formerly of Canterbury and uh, Illawarra. Gus Gould spent a little time with him. He's a very powerful runner. Expect him to get a little bit wide. This is Gaffey. Well, that pass was hard for the man to take. Peter Clark. And he's ruled offside. Stephen Clark. I just thought Gaffey held on to that pass a little too long. Almost impossible for Clark to take. Too late. He, he tried to give the ball to Clark. And, well, Clark had a defender right on top of him here. And the ball's come back from him, and, and Gaffey's well straight back to Gaffey. He's got to be offside. Not having a happy night. And another player receiving attention. Just trying to pick up who it is. Maybe Willis this time, the 5'8". What it's doing is giving both teams a chance to have another breather in these warm conditions. It's only been getting as low as 26 degrees in the evening. And it would be all of that right now. I think, in fact, it may be Paul Smith who, who made that tackle. Clashed out wide. It is indeed Paul Smith, one of the Magpies' try scorers. See it again. He came in for the ball in all tackle. Probably copped the forearm and the head. Again, accidental. He's all right, Paul Smith. So the full complement of players in both teams. And Tony Wall is the man who will look for touch. So to make sure of it, he's kicked it. Off towards Kakadu. And here comes Stewart. As Jerry Mesher goes to dummy half. 23 metres out from the line. They're looking for the knockout blow. The Magpies leading by two points. Grief proving a handful for the defence. Right on the 20 metre line. O'Donnell was in a bit of trouble over the ruck there. As Dunn. Support for Bill Dunn, but couldn't get the arm three in any case. As Mesher again from dummy half, then to Sidaris. A little dummy to Langmack. Sidaris still going, kicks early on the tackle count. Chases through Jim Sidaris, cleaned up by Walker. And Clark will rule. And he forced the ball. We have a line dropout. Well, that big fender, Jim Sidaris, comes in handy. Pushed a player off just before he put that kick up. Almost got there. The referee's ruled a little knock on there from Walker before he got himself out of the, the in goal. So 
Jim Sedaris, it was only the second tackle. And he took it upon himself to go for the four points. As Walker, big dropout from Andrew Walker, 55 metres on the fly as Smith will come back at top pace. To get around Hall, he does that. Tackled by Adrian Lamb, the halfback for the Roosters, is now George Arles. Nice run from the number seven. Made another 10 metres for the Magpies. In prime position at the moment, the Western Suburbs side. Leading by 14 points to 12 midway through the second half. The decoy runner was Stewart. They find Bill Dunn. Can't get him to ground. Three players in there. So it takes an extra man out of the line. They shift it back to the left. Then back in field comes Georgialis. He gets away, Steve Georgialis. Just a couple of metres short of the try line. Willis, almost a knock on a dummy half to wall. They're in trouble, the Roosters. Langmack inside for Pearson. Oh, Paul Langmack caught him inside. Said have four points. Brandon Pearson with a try. And the Magpies with a very handy lead indeed. 18 points to 12. Well, they've done very well here. The ball coming out wide through Brent Stewart. Langmack, he looked like he was going to get through the hole himself. Very smart play, but what about the defenders on the inside? Couldn't read. Brandon Pearson was dropping back in. You see Pearson dropping back inside there. And the East defence, well, they've just strolled across. Not worry about covering the inside. Magpies will six points up and the kick to come. And not from a hard angle at all for Tony Wall. Well, I'm not sure whether Andrew Leeds has been in any condition to come back on the field, but Wall hasn't really given coach Tom Radonikas much opportunity. His kicking is good. Had trouble with one bomb, but apart from that, I can't find a mistake for Tony Wall. And I said, not such a hard angle. Well, there's no angle at all. It's right in front of the sticks. Tony Wall will be looking to get this extra two, and that eight points would be very, very hard to pull back for the Roosters. Their errors haven't helped. They've certainly been on the wrong side of the ledger as far as handling errors go, the Roosters. Tony Wall, three from three, playing in the Metropolitan Cup the last few seasons. In Sydney, from right in front, but still all care taken. It's still two more points from the sideline or from in front. No mistake at all from Tony Wall. So an eight-point ball game now. We'll take a break with Western Suburbs leading the Roosters. 20 points to 12. Welcome back, Richardson Park in Darwin. At the moment, it's the Magpies smiling up by eight points, but still plenty of time remaining. But the Roosters in desperate need of scoring next as Paul Smith, a good run from the kickoff. He's able to get away from one. Magpies, well, they have been the better team, I have to say that. The one try that the Roosters came up with in the second half has been from the bomb. But all in all, in the 60 minutes that we've seen, it's definitely been a points decision to Western Suburbs. You see it that way, Block? Yes, it certainly has. I mean, they've been a lot more enthusiastic up front. Paul Langmack has summed this straight up. There's been plenty of space out here on the left-hand defence for the Roosters, and you can't buy experience. Langmack has seen that right throughout this game. Well, that was a late call there. This ball here from Langmack, or to Langmack, just floating forward. The play's gone on one tackle before the touch judge called it back. Will notify the referee. I reckon the Roosters have one match winner and he's out wide, Shane Guerrett. He could be the player that we're looking for. He hasn't seen much of the football, but he has the, the pace that could turn the game. Well, he's his wing partner as well, Graham Mackay. They don't get much clean football, and both of them are so good. Mackay can beat him his opposite number, man on man, but he never gets too much clean ball. And you'd love to see Guerrett in space. Great rush from Rickardson. Now it comes through Iroh, kicking very early on the tackle count. Here's the man, Graham Mackay. Graham Mackay inside, oh. the ball goes down. Well, I thought he may have been offside, but Clark had said play on, and by rights, the Roosters should have had a try. Well, the other thing, we see Graham Mackay chasing this little kick through, and what a beautiful kick it was there from Iroh. 
Mackay's picked it up. If he could put the ball straight back into Brendan Hall's hands, if he just had to draw the fullback and pass, they're over. As it was, Hall had, had the opportunity. He's just on side, I think, there, Mackay. Give the ball straight away, and they're over. Waits a little bit too long, and Hall just can't handle it. Oh. What we saw from the replay, right in line, perhaps, Mackay. It was line ball. But the referee Clark had said play on, so that's exactly what happened. Anyway, a let off for Western Suburbs. Graham Mackay on Gary Belcher's cue getting involved. And a little kick from Iro. He's done that twice tonight. Both have been good kicks from Tony Iro, but it was good hands from Mackay. Is now brief with another hitter. We really do only know one way, these two Magpies props. They're doing the job. The kick comes from the 5'8", Willis. A high ball from him. Pressure on Andrew Walker. Getting some of his own back. Steve Georgialis flying through for the try. What a four pointer for the Magpies. Steve Georgialis out jumping Andrew Walker. Well, they're going to sign him up for Collingwood. Keep the black and white colours on. But the way he's taken that ball, Georgialis, you wouldn't hesitate to put him back at fullback if you needed to. Here we see the high kick. Well, they're all just on side. Georgialis has come from the other, from just outside the kicker, taking it well. What a beautiful take. What about the take at the speed he was running from Steve Georgialis? He took the ball and just kept on going. I tell you what, they're harder to take when you're chasing a ball from that angle than, than coming onto it. He's done extremely well. They're looking good, the Magpies. Well, he's hardly stopped at all, Steve Georgialis. He'll want that one on the highlights tape. And he has been around a long time. Another player playing against his former club, former rooster, Steve Georgialis. Second try for 1995. I guarantee that was better than the first one. Well, how's our tip looking before the game? We've tipped the roosters. And they're certainly going to have a lot of work to do. To I reckon they're in trouble. In... I reckon they're in a bit of trouble. Oh, you reckon? Yeah, well, they're only 12 points behind. A kick to come. Battle of the birds. Look, shot birds at the moment. There's Wall from in front. And there's another two. And this lead extends out to 14 points. Western Suburbs, 26. The Roosters, 12. Still time in the match, but they'll need to score three times this try. Well worth having another look at. Well, never did he look like he was... Well, he thought only about taking that. He kept his eye on the ball all the way, and he thrilled a bit. So's Ken McGuinness. Andrew Walker almost in shock when he saw... Georgialis not only take the ball, but then just continue on his merry way. And Walker's the man who gets play back underway with another deep kickoff. Right back to the goal line. And Bill Dunn has the job of bringing it back out towards the 20. Tackled there by Ward. And also O'Brien, who's back into the match. Magpies right at the moment. They are in control. Chasing win number three for 1995. And now 35 metres out from the line. Wasn't there a bet at the start of the year? They win three in a row and Tommy has to shave his head? Wouldn't we all love to see it? You've got to give some credit to Tommy Radonna because he has got this side very enthusiastic. They've made a few errors tonight, but I'll tell you what, they're chasing all night, they're tackling well, they're talking, they're all, in, they're all involved. You see Shane Ware there waiting for the referee's ruling before he takes off. And there's Tommy. Should be pretty happy. They can hold out for the next, for the rest of the game. And another mistake from the Roosters. Well, it's not happening right now for the Sydney City side. Here it is again, Nigel Gaffey. And it just comes out when he hits the deck. Just on this Western Suburbs side, I know you give raps to players like Jim Sedaris, but the try scorer, Steve Georgialis, I mean, he's an another great game for Western Suburbs tonight. And the two front rowers, I know I've given them a few raps, but Stewart and Grief, they get the job done as Pearson charges through. There's no one at home. Rickardson chasing Pearson. Good night. The Magpies, they're racing away with this one. Brandon Pearson from halfway. It's another four-pointer. Well, the Roosters have fallen to bits. That is a soft try from the scrum. Nothing special here. The ball's come out here. The little drop-off play inside comes Pearson. Just a simple missed tackle. And they're not going to catch him there. Luke Rickardson tries, but Pearson changes his angle. It's himself over right underneath the post. 
Walker. Well, it's Brendan Hall. He got wrong footed there. Pearson. Not going to do any get get many as easy as that. Determination plus on the face of Brandon Pearson on his way to the try line. And a fair sort of tally for 1995 for Pearson. Six tries. Started to come into his own towards the end of last year and has kicked on, which is good for a young footballer. And Phil Gould, it has been a tough old week. And this hasn't made it any easier. Well, Tony Wall, he's got five from five. He hasn't had any tough ones, though, I have to say that. Most of them have been from close to the post. And Wall has another two. He's enjoying his night's work. Six out of six. 12 points for Tony Wall, and that scoreline, a good one for Western Suburbs, 32 to 12. We'll take a break and be back with more. And back at Richardson Park in Darwin. The Roosters now in all sorts of bother if they weren't before. As Bill Dunn with the hit up again from the kickoff. It was only a few minutes ago that we were in this situation. The Roosters make an error on the second tackle. And straight from the scrum, the Magpies have another try. Five tries to two the tally for the evening. And working it away from the 20 in brief. Leading the hit-ups tonight for Western Suburbs. Another fine game. Well, hasn't he had a good game? He's only 98 kilos. He's not the biggest front row you're going to see. But he's very mobile. And away they go again, George Arliss. Not far behind Grief in the race for player of the match. It's last tackle for Western Suburbs. Kick downfield. Walker at the back. Has a wall of Western Suburbs defenders in front of him. Got away from McGuinness. Good run from Andrew Walker. Tony Wall was the man who, in the end, had the tackle. Is now Shane Werrick back in field and Billy Dunn doing the driving work. Pushed him back five or six metres. There's not too many runners with their hand up for the ball at the moment for the Roosters. This is Hall. He's tackled on the 30. They're moving around the park a little slow as Iro throws it out to Mackay. He drops it inside. No one there to pick it up except for Brandon Pearson. Well, there's that Roosters mistake we've almost come to expect in this second half. We see Tony Iroh kick the ball there straight from the play, the ball into touch. A Magpies feed here. But they'd be loving it. They're tackling well, the Magpies, and they this ball here, I thought the short pass was on. It was a tough one for Mackay. I think Mackay there was prepared to concede that he was going to be pushed over the sideline, so he just dropped it behind him. Pearson, unfortunately, was the closest man to the football. This could well be party time for West. They could finish this match right off. As Willis has tackled 31 metres out from the Roosters line. They are looking tired with good reason. As now Justin Dooley is tackled. There's another player against his former club, a former Rooster. As now Damian Driscoll goes forward. Now the substitutes coming into play. They had plenty up their sleeve. The Roosters use three in the first half. As this is Stewart tackled, five metres out from the Roosters' line. Cherry Mesher slips into dummy half. Calling for it was Langmack. Mesher goes himself. Well, that is a soft rugby league try. Cherry Mesher gets another four points for the Magpies. And this scoreline is just getting a little bit embarrassing for the Roosters. Yeah, well, you've got to ask the question why the Roosters' defenders on their own line are so, so spread out. Tony Iroh is so wide of the ruck. So he leaves the tackle there for Jason Lowry coming out of marker. It's just too, there's just too much space. Iro standing that wide, so everyone else in the, the defence stands wide, and, and Mesher strolls over. Bill Gould, he's asked you know, some, some questions of his side. The defence has been fairly poor this second half. Well, it's a long way to come, and I guess now we have to call it a thrashing, because that's what's happening. There's still time to go in this match for the Magpies to get a few more points. And again, Tony Wall has a conversion from no more than five metres off centre. And the Magpies proving last week's big win over Parramatta, 28 points to two or somewhere thereabouts. Wasn't a fluke. They can score points. 
The defence has been good. So looking for seven out of seven, Tony Wall in first grade. An early replacement for Andrew Leeds. Seven out of seven is what it is. Look at that scoreline for the Magpies. Over the Roosters, 38 to 12. And coming into this match in recent seasons, the Roosters held a big advantage over the Magpies. Well, all that has to change tonight. And there it is again. I mean, the dummy from Jerry Mesher. Tony Iroh was just out, just gone. Well, he just showed the ball, didn't he? And Iroh took off for the, the first guy off the ruck and left the biggest hole. Steve Roach on the sideline. Is there a smile yet from Tommy Radonikas? Oh, he's, he's been smiling since halftime. Look, you'd have to be very disappointed if you were the coach, Phil Gould. I mean, he spent 10 minutes talking to them about their market play and being soft around the middle of the ruck. It didn't look like they've listened to him at halftime. It's not over yet by a long way. Phil Gould, a man with his problems. There's Dooley. Fired up for that hit up. Still just over 10 minutes remaining. Western Suburbs enjoying this. There's Grief. Another hit up for him. Another six or seven metres made. He's sick of the side of him, the Roosters. And the kick on the last. It's just good play from the Magpies. Well drilled. That kick finds the line from Willis. Clark will consult his linesman to see if it was touched by Mackay. Well, no ruling there from the linesman. Mackay looked to have a go at it, but I think he pulled, pulled his hands back at the last moment. Rooster's feed, it should be. Let's just have another close look. This is the, the benefit of the video replay. Mackay, cleanness. He had a go at it. Well, he had a swoop, didn't he? He was lucky there. It's away for Graham Mackay. Got the short haircut. The hair never grew back. Scrum taking some time. Got a good scrum, really, from the from the Roosters. It's a break back, and they're with the ball 25 metres out from their own line. Do we have such a thing as a good scrum in rugby league? Well, that was pretty close. Almost clean. Donald then away to Hall. The Roosters, I think, have been hard hit when you think about this match. The, the players that went from the field, Juni, was very safe at the back, and also Jason Hudson. He was creating a few things early They're not able to get back onto the field has hurt the roosters tonight but i guess in the wash up their defense just hasn't been up to scratch well we spoke about their big forwards and i think that's where they've tired they probably should have known with our tips early the big forwards are struggle they turned so much ball over and all well, the magpies have had the weight of possession and in this sort of heat the guys like that out there trying to make 30 and 40 tackles each well it just almost proves impossible tackle there from Jason Lowry he fell that Tony Wall he got straight to the feet now Bell former Cronulla Shark Paul Bell not wanted it at the end of last year and linked up with the Magpies now the ball is Driscoll it's a former Newcastle Knight more ground for Mesha and man is offside so penalty to the Magpies and in this situation, will they go for another four or Tony Wall from right in front, 30 metres out? I'd say, well, hang on, Skip, I want eight out of eight. Well, there's no reason why not to. Mesha here was playing for the penalty. He could see the two east markers. They were never lined up. Neither of them really in front of the play of the ball, and he was looking at the ref the moment they grabbed him, pleading for the penalty. He got it. On the sideline blocker. Well, Mesha, uh, we thought it was a bit of a surprise selection in front of uh, Jim Sedaris, but I'll tell you what, he's had an outstanding game today. He scored a try, been very, very solid in defence, and he can hit for a little fella too. It's Dooley with the ball, Justin Dooley. Looks probably the tallest player on the field. Is now the follow-up hit-up from Driscoll. O'Donnell took him front on. Play on, says Clark. Georgialis, for a moment there, it opened up. The Roosters players were just getting back on side. McGuinness from dummy half. Inside it comes for Driscoll. He's dropped the ball short of the try line. Let off for the Roosters. There haven't been many tonight. Towed through and now more pressure on the Roosters. Lamb has put his foot on the dead well, ball yeah. line. So a line dropout. Well, well it's, it's tough, isn't it? It's all going the Magpies way. They've kicked it through. It looked like it was going to go dead and it spun around. Stayed inside. Lamb cleaned it up and... Well, here's this drop ball. Driscoll thought he was over the line. He was trying to get the ball free to try to put it over the line and, and lost it. The kick through there from Georgialis. 
And tiptoe along the sideline. There you see the ruling from the in-goal touch judge. And dropout goes the way of Paul Smith. One of the Magpies try scorers tonight, straight past Lowry. Well, that was just a rubber old arm stuck out there that Smith went past. 22 metres out from the Roosters' line. What price another try as he goes Stewart. Still going like he was in the first minute. Tackled there by Iroh and Lamb. Great run, haven't they led the way? Stewart and Glenn Grief tonight for the Magpies. Dooley. And to contain five metres out from the line. It took three defenders to get him to ground. Mesher again across to George Arles. Langmack, Moren passed him. Back it went to Driscoll. They're still going forward though, the Magpies. That's the main thing. Through the hands, everything going right. Pearson, then on to Willis. One more pass. Now across it came, the dummy from Wall. Oh, the Magpies, they've turned into the entertainers. And Tony Wall, a well-deserved try. Well, he looked like he dummy to no one as well. But what about the ball movement here from the Magpies? There was a, a little sus one there, a pass that went out. One of the, the Western Suburbs players got a hand to it. The referee will play on. So you come across through the back here. That ball there, no, well, it looks like it was okay. We see Willis here, pops a little one to Langmac. And who's he dummy to? Oh, no, I think he might have had a man out there. There's certainly he, he had his winger outside him there. Well, it's all about keeping the football alive. And they just did that to perfection. Well, they knew that the Eastern Suburbs players just didn't have numbers. That's the winger there, Graham Mackay, making a tackle. No, there was no man on the outside. There was no man. <laughs> that was the dummy's dummy. Well, it was a good one, Tony Wall. He scored plenty of points tonight. See what, Tony Wall, seven from seven. Four pointer, 18 points. Paul Langmack, I think he wanted to be there at the finish. Tommy says, no, have a rest. And this for eight out of eight after scoring the try. I know it's not a hard kick, but a little bit of pressure on him as the longer the stretch goes. That's a pun about Tony Wall, the longer the stretch. There's another two. And that is a smile from Tom Radonikas. Good on you, Tommy. 44 points to 12. The Magpies leading the Roosters. Well, here we see this play again. They know that they're stretched all over the place. Brandon Pearson manages to get the ball out there. Willis pops it back to Langmack, and he does the right thing, shovels it on straight away. And Tony Wall, the dummy to nobody. Well, he's the kicker, so he gets it around as close as he can to the post. That was probably the hardest kick he had all night. They've scored them close to the posts. And this scoreline has exploded. As far as the Roosters are uh, concerned, this is Horro back from the kickoff. There's still some time remaining, so this is Dooley, drop ball, Lowry with it. Drop ball coming a little too late, it seems like Western Suburbs have had all the football for the past five, ten minutes. Big tap from Lowry. Can they finish off with a try, the Roosters? 20 metres out from the Magpies line, it's been quite some time since they've been down this end of the field. Pass came away to Ward. 15 metres out from the line. A disappointing night for the Sydney City Roosters. It's Lamb. Ball in the hands of Gaffey. Standing out wide, but I'm sure he'll be the first to admit it hasn't been his best game as Rickardson. Head down. Ooh, picked up from behind. That's not a good practice at all from Bell. Well, you just don't do it. You don't put your hand between the other player's legs and lift. He was lucky a couple of his teammates had Hold of the East player there, the, the Roosters player there, and stop him from getting up too high. Ball knocked out of the grasp of Clinton O'Brien, scooped up by Rickardson, then picked up by Ward. Ward for the corner, Barry Ward slams it down. Linesman says fair try, and fair it is that the Roosters have a four-pointer basically out of nothing. The try scorer Barry Ward, 44 to 16. Well, the Darwin crowd up here are getting their money's worth as far as tries go, particularly this second half. Ball coming out the back from there from Lamb. And we see it here, it gets knocked out. O'Donnell tries to push it back, it finds its way to Ward. They had plenty of numbers there, but Mesher, he just hung off a little bit too long. Ward's got himself four points. It's too late though. Well, Barry Ward, there's plenty of him. He really did hammer this ball down over the line. So 10 tries, the total for this evening here at Richardson Park in Darwin. Hard to believe that scoreline. 
don't think the disappointment conceding that try will last too long for Western Suburbs. They've more than done their task tonight to come this way. They would have been happy with a one-point win. And a rooster, has he kidnapped that kid or what's happened there? Well, the, the face says it all. He's a rooster's fan, that kid, and he's not looking too happy. Good job wearing the rooster's outfit tonight. As Mackay from the sideline, bringing that one across the face of goal. So that scoreline remains 44 points to 16 in the final minute. We might not have time for the restart, and in fact that is full time. Full time at the top end. The Magpies have run away convincing winners. The crowd appreciative of the football that has been played, the tries that have been scored. Seven tries to three for the Magpies. And eight from eight from the boot of Tony Wall. Some happy Magpies out there. I doubt some happy Magpie fans watching at home.